Hey, is this Arrow Collins? That would be me. What's going on? And this is Debbie Irving. I'm psyched to talk to you. Oh, I'm excited to talk to you because you've got some courage to put this together. I love that you know you're pushing forward and you're and you're being very open and honest. Yeah, I took a, it took some practice to get to that open and honest part. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask about that. that. Unplugged and totally uncut. I feel like that's what I had to do to myself. So I'm glad that's the name of your show. How many how many no's did you receive before you got a solid yes? For the publishing? Yeah. I I got so many no's that I I ended up self publishing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because people didn't want to touch it. They didn't want to go there. They didn't understand. Okay. What do you mean a white story? Like people just thought that race and racism belonged only to people of color. Right, right. The idea that a white woman would be telling a memoir that had something to do with race, they just, nobody could, it's like they had to read the book to yeah. understand what I was doing. And that's that's the reason why I wanted to talk to you, because it was like, wait a second, I really want to know what, what the source of information is here, and so I can learn myself, because it is a book of teaching, but at the same time, it's also that place, maybe that it will inspire others, inspire others to go and do their own story. We all have one. And mm -hmm. if you had asked me, Debbie, what's your racial identity development story? I would have thought you had eight heads. I just wouldn't have known where where to begin. So I actually, I describe the book as a hybrid memoir self-help book um, because I tell my story and yet at the end of each of these short chapters, there's a, a question for everybody to sort of explore their own story. Listeners need to understand that someone as powerful as Van Jones really embraced this book. I mean, that says a lot about what you put in this book. Yeah, I really had no idea how big the book would be. I, I wrote it uh, with a goal of you know, like a hundred friends and family <laughs> reading it. And it's almost 300,000 books um, have been sold. So it's, it did, it turned, and part of that was when I put the book in the world, some people were still saying, you know, this was in 2014, Barack Obama was um, in office and there were a lot of people saying, oh, we're post-racial. And of course, people who understood race and racism knew full well that there was a backlash coming. And so every time there was a high, highly um, uh, sensitized, uh, sensationalized racist event in the news, maybe the murder of a black person at the hands of the police, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, Paula Dean using a racist word. Anytime one of those events happened, my book sales shot up. Yep. So someone asked me in an interview last week, do you think that you, your book was responsible for some of the racial reckoning? And absolutely no. I do not think my book played a role in any of that. I do think my book was a good tool for people when larger forces cause those things. Oh yeah, because w what's great about the book is the fact that we all have these voices in our head and heart that get so loud, and to me, that's where the problems are. And we need a place where we can go and, and sit down and just kind of think this out and plan it out, and, and reading your book gives you that opportunity to say, oh, wait a second, okay, I have a different point of direction now. Yeah, and I don't know what you're thinking specifically, you know, the voices in your head and heart, but usually when people start saying them out loud, other people around the room go, oh, me too. Yeah. I didn't know other people had that same voice in their head and heart. Well, one of, one of the areas is is right here on, on, on page 71 in the fact where you start talking about the privileges. I, You know, you can go shopping alone most of the time and there, you can be sure, I mean, your children are going to be safe. You can swear and dress in a secondhand clothes. And, you know, how many people can do that? How many people can, can really, you know, use a check without being in question or walk into a grocery store without someone thinking, you're going to steal from me, aren't you? I know. And that's actually from a list. Peggy McIntosh who's a, a white woman, also uh, anti-racist. She wrote a seminal uh, essay like 30 years ago called Unpacking the Privilege of Unpacking the Backpack of Privilege or something. I not, don't have the language quite right, but she lists like 46 of those things wow. that you just named. And it's just it's incredible that like just one of those causes you to think, whoa, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all we're doing is taking in someone else's experience. Yeah. And and the question is, why don't we do that? Why is it so hard to do that? Yeah, we went through the experience uh, a couple of years ago about where they, they asked a, a group of teachers uh, about uh, if you feel like you're privileged, please step forward. And my wife did not. 
and 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 the thing is, and then she got in trouble because it's like, uh, wait, wait a second, you're judging somebody you don't even know of her Jewish background. That's not that's not a person of privilege. They've gone through hell as well. Yeah. And it's, and it's hard. I mean, the thing is that there's so many ways to have privilege. Like I have able-bodied privilege. Yep. Yep. I have heterosexual privilege. I have Christian privilege. Yep. Like there are all these ways. So, so your wife does not have Christian privilege. Um, and that's what, that privilege walk exercise that your wife did. I'm not a huge fan of that because... Um, though some white people will say, oh, my God, it was the first time I, I got it. It's really so much more complicated than that. And, and privilege is such um, it can cause a really tender feeling in mm-hmm. people. Uh, so we have to be careful to explain it, I think, before we start telling people you're privileged. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that the re- one of the reasons why you, you know, you, you really put your heart into transforming confusion into curiosity? Yes. Um, I actually, I have a workshop that I do uh, these days called Transformational Conversations, Moving from Fear uh, to Curiosity, because yeah. when somebody accuses you of being a racist or being privileged or, or you know, let's cross the color line of, of being a lazy, you know, fill in the blank racist comment, it's, it's a label that does not fit with how we understand ourselves to be. And so it's so helpful to be curious about another person, you know, and ask why, why does that comment, tell me more about how you feel when mm-hmm. someone says that. Mm-hmm. We with, just without don't, offending them. With, yes. And, and when we're really curious, as opposed to trying to change someone's mind, or con- it's a really different kind of a conversation. And I can turn curiosity on myself. Why am I so upset? Why does that comment bother me so much? Mm -hmm. It's just a comment. Um, So curiosity is actually an incredibly powerful tool. I see it as the flip side of of judgment. Yeah. Uh, And it really gets me out of fear almost every time. Yeah. I call that defragging, asking the questions and then questioning the answers. And you get deeper and deeper and deeper and you finally get to the core of what's really going on. What was that word? Defragging? Defragging, yeah. Fragging, like F R A G G I N G. Yeah, you know how we uh, we defrag a computer. We should defrag no, I've our hearts. No, I've never heard too. that word in my life. Are you kidding? Defrag is I'm when not. you go in there and you clean up the disc and stuff. You have to, it says, "Do you want to defrag?" Oh my God, <laughs> that's that's such a good, that's a fantastic term for this. <laughs> yeah, because I love you, it. you set us up with where we bring up the question, and now we have to we, we have to question the answer because I mean you you really do bring us into areas that you know that we're either afraid to talk about or it's like uh uh-uh, uh 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 no I was told never to go there. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I was raised to be quote unquote colorblind, as if that's possible. Yeah. If you don't see it, you're so you're not going to talk about it. And if you don't talk about it, you don't have the vocabulary. And also, as a white woman, this adds a layer for me. I was taught, you know, not to rock the boat. If you yeah. don't have anything nice to say, not don't say anything at all. So the whole idea of difficult conversations or conflict, like I was taught, I I, I came out of childhood thinking I was bad at them, or that they were sort of unnecessary and a sign of bad manners. So I've had to do a lot of work to be able to, you know, jump into really messy, hard conversations and stick with it. I would love to see how people are going to read this book, because the way that you develop each title for, for the chapters, I mean, you know, headwinds and tailwinds, uh, optimism, you've got invisibility. I think they're going to pick their favorite title and then, and then go in, jump in and then jump all over this book. Oh, that's interesting, and not read it start to finish. Yeah, because they're they're going to recognize they're going to go. Oh my optimism! Oh, I want to read that chapter because I'm I'm optimistic. I want I want to see what what's going on here. Yeah, I wonder if it works out of sequence. I, well, I do know that a lot of um, universities use it in their curriculums, and they ask me permission, and sometimes I'll just give them a chapter because it's what they're most interested right. in. Right. So I know that it does get used out of order. But yeah. it is meant to be read start to finish. But, you know, whatever works. The, <laughs> one of the things we want to get away from is one size fits all. <laughs> what have you learned over the past 10 years? Oh, my Lord. I have learned so much um, about my. I mean, I've, obviously, I continue to learn more and more about the world. There's this phenomenon in anybody who's ever studied any, anything, whether it's an instrument or art or a sport, you know this. Like The more you know 
the more you learn there is to know. So I have been in that process, just this widening, widening, widening landscape of stuff to learn about. But for myself, I have learned just how deeply this lives in me. I think one of the most haunting experiences I had was just about a year after the book came out. I was sitting at a book table. Um, I had been there about 30. So I've, I had given a keynote. I'm out, uh, outside the auditorium with a bookseller. We're sitting at a table. She's selling. I'm signing and chatting with people. And at about the 30-minute mark, she, she leans over and says, you just stood for someone, and you hadn't stood for anyone the whole time. Ooh. And who was it who I had stood for? a white guy who looked like he had just stepped out of a boardroom. And it was the first time I recognized, I knew that in addition to negative bias, I mm -hmm. had positive bias, particularly towards white men, CEO types, the men who, in my family who I was taught deserve special deference. Mm -hmm. But what was mind blowing to me is that I did it with zero awareness. Ooh. So I think one of the big learnings was that bias, we think of it as an idea, it lives in our bodies. Uh, it took me about a year and a half to not reflexively stand for a white man when sitting at a, at a book table. That's how powerful this stuff is. It just lives inside us. Wow. I learned something like that along the way of, of the way I shake hands. And, and someone said, no, don't, don't shake my hand that, that hard. And because you, not everybody is the same and will receive it the way that you, you're trying to make it, but no, you're doing it wrong. And I always thought you're supposed to have that firm handshake. Not so true to everybody. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, it's probably manly to have a really hard, firm handshake. And uh, so did it take you a while to uh, correct course on to that? To this day. to the, And that was well over 15 years ago. When I shake someone's hand, I, I would rather fist bump now. Because in this way, I know I'm not trying to manhandle them or take over the conversation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's such a good example of these habits. Like, they're, they're embodied. And, uh, and it takes a lot to, to outgrow them. Yeah, yeah. So where can people go to find out more about you, Debbie, especially you know, since you're out there on, on a lecture tour? Um, so you can find me at DebbieIrving.com. Uh, that's Debbie's with a Y, Irving's with an I. And I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, my website is meant to be a learning tool. It yeah. is resource rich. You could start and then a year from now, you'd still be going down the rabbit hole, one link leading you to another link. And um, I teach some online courses. I can be found at conferences. And uh, yeah, you can contact me if you want. Anyone can contact me through the website and the book waking up white didn't yes. just come out yeah. so um but it's you know i would still i wouldn't change a thing if i had to write it again it's a great great 101 book and it's available in audio ebook and uh print wherever books are sold i love it you got to come back to this show anytime in the future the door is always going to be open for you i love that thank you so much okay fragging fragging it's De my yep. word of the De day fragging defragging yep defragging we're cleaning out our our dusty old belief systems that are full of stuff we don't need anymore. That's exactly it. You know, I don't want to clean the room. I want to clear the room. That, that basically, that's, you know, that go, goes all the way back to Julia Cameron where she says, you know, you need to get in there and clear out that closet. Don't get rid of everything. Just clear it out. Just yeah, leave the stuff that, that you know works for you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Love it. Okay. You be brilliant, okay? Okay. You too, Errol. Thanks so much.